it doesn't say you're recording, but we're all recording. So welcome. This is the group that took the first mastermind slash workshop of practicing the Spodek method, and we're going to share our experiences. Uh, I'm Josh Spodek. I'm going to let everyone introduce themselves, but there's Conrad, who is the TA, I guess, and then the participants, Emily, Evelyn, and Eugene. Conrad, I wonder if you could describe yourself in a, in a minute or two. Happy to, Josh. Um, hi, I'm Conrad Ruiz here. I am a business owner for a uh, con online consulting firm. And yeah, I guess my my self-description will be just around the fact that I'm from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Um, I have gotten to know Josh through my time living in New York City as an entrepreneur uh, and throughout a lot of our time and initiatives together. Um, you know, he's ultimately gotten me to realize more and more how much I care about the planet sustainability. And as a result, I've done every, I've done a lot of different things, but um, some of my proudest to date are, um, you know, making a small commitment to not flying uh, as much as I can and just ultimately supporting um, this sustainable life as a, as a culture for, for others. Thank you, Emily. Sure, uh, my name's Emily. I am a chemical engineer and general sustainability interested person. Um, I'm based in Boston and work at a clean tech startup. Um, and yeah, I guess sustainability has always been like the, maybe maybe it's dramatic to say, most important thing in my life. Um, and I'm just like always excited to find ways to understand the situation better and live more positively impactfully. Thank you, Evelyn. Hey, I'm Evelyn Wallace. I hope my audio is okay. Um, I am a graduate student in uh, social work. I go to Howard University online. Um, I'm the mother of three boys, crazy, little, wonderful, fabulous, terrible creatures. Um, and I came to this with um, not necessarily a skepticism, but maybe like an addiction to doom scrolling or like a mentality that doom scrolling was all I could do. Um, so this was really, um, this was like a crash course, an intro introductory course of empowerment for me. So I'm excited to talk more about it. Thank you. And Eugene? Yep. Hi, my name is Eugene Bible. Uh, I am a mechanical engineer working in the construction industry. I am also host of a This Sustainable Life podcast called Solve for Nature. And I also have a blog and an Instagram and a YouTube channel, all dedicated to sustainability. So Eugene right now is driving, so that's why he's not on video, but he'll pop in on video at some point soon. Uh, and I'm going to ask this question and let people answer, not in any particular order, but whoever wants to pop in first. But what was your biggest result or takeaway from doing this workshop? Or I could call on someone. I think Evelyn was about to say something. So she said she wanted to share something. So what do you have to say? <laughs> sure, sure, I'll go. Um, the biggest takeaway, uh, I think, is that... Um, it's not hopeless. Like I, I, my, my sort of MO used to be just telling my kids don't have kids. Like everything's on fire. It's not going to get better. Like abandon faith all ye who enter here. But, um, I think my takeaway is that there's, there's not only hope, but like hope for fun in your own life. Not just like, Oh, I get this like chore that we have to do, like this drudgery of saving the planet, but that it, that, um, that shifting a mindset and a lifestyle towards sustainability instead of just like shucking it off on like, oh, that's for governments and corporations to acknowledge like, oh, this is my trash or like this is my, um, you know, pollution. <laughs> this is my damage. Um, that was a real um, shift for me. And it is it's just really opened the door to what life can be when you see it through this lens of um, possibility and, and change. And if you're not afraid of that change or not, if you can get over the fear of self-reflection and maybe not liking what you see that, um, yeah, that there's like this whole world of possibility out there. I'm going to come back and ask for details of what happened there, but let's go to Emily, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, I think my biggest takeaway is that people are 
a lot more open than I would have expected to talking about sustainability and um, approaching conversations with like a really good faith attitude. Um, I think like it's really easy to be jaded and feel like no one wants to change or do anything or like put in any work. Um, but I discovered that like a lot of people I know and also just like random people I don't know um, that like this led me to interact with. Um, we're all like very open and like happy to talk about uh, sustainability and things that they love about the environment and actions that they can take to to act on that. Um, and like the ease of making those connections and how happy and like eager people are too um, was like a big takeaway for me that makes me feel um, a lot more at ease um, in like initiating those connections. Now I should go to Eugene now, but I have to ask a couple of questions about Emily's answer because you said, Influ you said talking to people that you don't even know. And you also said that you were able to talk to people. Uh, what changed? Uh, how, how, how are you talking to people you don't even know about something that at first you didn't want to talk about or felt uncomfortable talking about at all? Yeah, um, I think like having it as like homework for this to like, okay, go have this conversation with like some number of people this week helped because it gave me like I the word I've been using is like an excuse um because instead of just approaching someone being like I want to talk to you which seems really weird um I could just be like oh like I I have to do this um like it's just a thing that I'm doing and I can kind of like uh simplify it that way um made it easier and like before then I didn't really have like any ongoing reason to just like talk to random people and I'm also just like maybe this is a formerly descriptor but not a person who likes to just like strike up conversations with strangers everywhere I go about sustainability or like anything uh -huh. <laughs> But yeah. So this is this is beyond sustainability. It was giving you tools. Yeah, I'd say so. It it's slightly to be seen if like, um, what what this will look like when I don't have like homework anymore. Um, but I think I I started moving in the direction of like, what is a reason that I can have that isn't I have homework, and it like actually can just be as simple as like. I'm trying to have this conversation with more people. And like, wanna, that seems to be something that people are like, okay, cool. Now I wanna ask about dinners cause I think that's gonna be part of it, but I'm gonna move to Eugene so that he's not left out. Is it, can you do video yet, Eugene? I, I can, but I'm in, I'm in the car and I'm Don't gonna crash, have to, yeah. yeah, no, I'm not driving right now. I just pulled over and I'm gonna have to get out of the car in a minute, just for a minute here. But um, uh, I think for me, my biggest takeaway was probably that sustainability is a lot more fun when it's with a group. <laughs> so much of what I've done up until now has been like struggle online to try to get the word out, try to find people to talk to, find people to do things together with. And when you're just doing it with a group, especially when it's a group that meets regularly and everybody is so passionate and everyone brings something slightly different to the table in terms of both ability, mindset, um, just ways of thinking about things. Um, it's just been so much more fun, like sustainability in general, just talking about it, doing it, everything is more fun when it's with a group. Now, I knew everyone, but you guys didn't know, none of you knew any of each other before, before this, right? So that whole group thing came through this. Now, Conrad, you had a different experience than everyone because you were uh, more of a TA than a participant, but what was your ex experience of it? What was your biggest takeaway? Uh, given my world around time and time management and 
I think to to a lot of what we spoke about, Josh, in regards to you know what are what were some of the biggest expectations that everyone had coming into uh, the workshop, which was you know how are they going to manage the time around you know living sustainably, and it was funny because you know I think when we first spoke about it, there was this conversation around that you always like to have, which is like you know, the leadership versus the management side of this conversation. And everyone leans toward the management side of like, here are all the tactical ways in which you can, you know, fit in the time to kind of coerce or cajole yourself into living and acting more sustainably. And it's like, no, I think the fundamental irony about that is that the the leadership principle itself really entices people to invest the time. And it doesn't really feel like they're stretching themselves thin against other conflicts. I mean, certainly, there, there's still other things that everyone's responsible to taking care of, you know, their job, their families, um, and their personal lives. But sustainability is a big component of that third aspect of that personal life. And for those who recognize that they're acting upon their own desires and, and principles, like, you know, it's nice to see that, that they don't feel like that that's a burden on their time. It's actually, it's a gift. It's a joy that they have. And they look back on it, not with regret, um, but with desire to do more gift, joy, desire, fun. This is not what I expect most people to talk about when they're talking about leading others to act on their environmental, on the, on the environment, on sustainability. Evelyn, it looked like you had something to say while Emily was talking. Did I read, did I read you right? Well, I'm usually talking at my screen when I'm on mute on Zoom. It's one of my favorite things, <laughs> online meetings. Um, I don't, I don't remember which particular part I was responding to, but I wanted to go you back know. with you in any case, because uh, you talked separately. I mean, you talked a lot of, in the group about your relationship with your mother. And I wonder if you, do you mind if I ask you about that here now? Yeah, please. I was looking forward to talking about her. What did the, uh, what was that, how did that really, what was that relationship before with regard to sustainability or, or in general? And how did, what were the stages it went through and where is it now? Sure. Yeah. My mom was like the first person. She was my guinea pig of the Spodek method. Um, and I, and, you know, part of that conversational format is to have someone explore what they can do in their own life, right? Not be told what to do, but to really do their own exploration. And it was funny because at first my, like, she did all these very squirrely things of like, oh, that sounds like a fun conversation to have someday. And, you know, so, so having to like guide her back, like, all right, well, today's that day, mom. And she's like, oh, oh, okay. She was on board, but you could see that she was, it was just new to her and, and that um, <laughs> she had this sense of um, that she already was doing, you know, she already was doing, she did like, part of our conversation was her telling me all the things she had already accomplished. And um, like we've talked about in this group, I think as coming from the social work perspective, I think it's important to honor and recognize that and let people, um, recognize their own selves, you know, about like, you know, this is how that's been important to me, as long as it doesn't just end there, like, okay, great, you bring your reusable bags to the grocery store, like end of story. Um, so it's really great. I actually just she texted. So so that's where it started, right? Where, where like, she was like, Oh, yeah, that'll that'll be a fun conversation to have someday. And, and, um, oh, I'm already doing this. is These are all the things I'm already doing to oh, okay, let's have that conversation now. Um, and I think she committed to, um, not using plastic on the day she was going to travel. She was like tra traveling um, here. And, uh, and then we, you know, we, but, but that was just the spark. It was like just the beginning. And so since then she and I have been sort of lighting each other up. It's like Eugene said, you know, being part of a group and this group is one format of that grouping, but then we get to take, oh, like Emily said of like, oh, it's a lot easier when it's an assignment, you know, you get, there's like a, there's a reason you get to talk to someone and explain to them, oh, it's my homework. I, you know, I have to. Um, so like the there's like the group of us meeting here, but then the groups that we create as we connect out, you know, like little good viruses. <laughs> um, and so watch like my mom and I have like been sort of lighting each other up. And, you know, she just texted the other day. She's she's on fire. She's with it. She's like figuring out how to do her laundry without using plastic. She just she she um sent me a picture of this um this like food um bowl and like utensils that um there's like a man uh, uh I, I mean it's like homelessness is different in Mexico she lives in Mexico um but there is a, ma a neighborhood man who does not have reliable shelter and all of the neighbors take turns feeding him um and I think she feeds him lunch or something um but it, she says it's every day so but she doesn't feed him every meal in any case she said that she had been using you know disposable 
um, uh, uh, plate cutlery and, you know, plates and dishware. Um, and that she communicated to him that like, she, you know, this is going to shift and like here, you know, I have these, like, you know, this plate now bring it back. And he didn't bring it back the next day, but then she explained to him sort of what, you know, what the, what her hope was. And he sort of understood it. Like it took him a minute to understand. I think he struggles with uh, mental health, but um, she also says that her whole community down there, she's like, I, you know, we're, we're all, we're using soda streams now. Like I, you know, the, my whole, the whole group of us, there's this whole community of expats who like, aren't using, you know, plat, like one single use plastic anymore. So as a result I can... of her, Sorry to interrupt, but as a result of her, yes. <laughs> so you're influencing this community in Mexico through your mom. Uh, you're influencing this, group this is, yeah. community in Mexico yeah. through me, through my mom. Yes, exactly. And that's what feels so yeah, I mean, that that's that's part of what feels like such an honor, like, oh, I'm just a link in the chain and I don't have to be a pro. Like, I don't have to be Josh in order to um, share this with someone else and for it to catch and for her to like all of a sudden get bigger, you know, and and that there's like this friendly competition now with me and my mom. I'm thinking, man, we should start a podcast, <laughs> mothers and daughters, friendly competition. So I'm glad you asked about her because I'm I'm really like honored that she shifted um, you know, like most mother daughters, we've had our history of tension, but we've also had our history of um, real connection and closeness. So it's this this is one of those opportunities that I feel like we're we're allies and um, compatriots and just um, yeah, real we're we're just real supporters of each other. So it's it's been a real magical transformation. I'm going to segue to from that into what did you expect before starting? If because I think people. People have talked about the Spodic method, and we're not going to go into in this conversation what the Spodic method is. But what, when they're talking about the homework, it's a structured conversation to have to lead people to share their environmental values and, and invite them to act on them. So that's what people are doing. Why, when they're talking about, it's not they're not just having conversations or doing homework. They're, there's something very structured and specific that they're doing. Uh, what did you guys expect before it started? Uh, let's go in a different order. Eugene, what did you expect before this started? And then we'll do Emily and then Evelyn and then Conrad. Just keep the order. You know, I wasn't really sure what to expect going into it. Um, I knew that it was going to be more Spodek method, which I was already somewhat familiar with from doing my podcast. And I'd already done it a bunch of times. And I wasn't exactly sure where it was going to go. I just felt like we're probably going to get to do the Spodek method more. I'll get more experience with doing it. And that was kind of it for me at, at the beginning. I was like, I don't know. That was kind of my expectation, I guess. So if you, you were experienced that, I mean, you've done um, something like 50 episodes by now, maybe more. And did you expect you could yeah. learn much or did you expect like, oh, maybe I'll refine a bit about the ed edges. And did you, how much more did you learn than you expected or less? A lot more, actually. Um, obviously, when I'm doing the podcast, usually I'm, I'm recording episodes like maybe one every couple of weeks, right? Maybe. Um, and so it it never feels like you get like this one like solid block of, of practice kind of, you don't get like this consolidated block, which is exactly what I got when we started doing it as a group, like me doing it with others and then others doing it with each other too. And just like watching it happen just like five or six times and just jamming through everybody's problems with it or the things that they don't know how to figure out it just it got like this really really nice focused practice session that kind of opened me up to different people's ways of doing it seeing other people do it even though it was their first time you know maybe doing something different in a way that you know maybe josh or i hadn't have thought about it before and, and just hearing all the different ways of it happening immediately just started making my brain just the cogs in my brain just start turning and, and thinking about the Spodek method in different ways. Cause before I used to think of it very, very formulaically. Like I used to just think it's like a formula. You just do this, 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 this. But once we started having our meetings and, and going through it with all the different people and, and getting all the different kinds of feedback, then I started going, Oh, this is actually kind of fun. It's actually kind of a, like a, almost like a creative process. It's almost like a performance kind of thing. Um, where, where you can kind of express yourself and, and there's like strategy in there, there's empathy, there's um, trying to figure out how to connect with people you're talking with. Um, and it became a lot more of an interesting, engaging and fun method for me after we had 
done it with the group. Interesting, engaging, fun to talk to people and lead them on sustainability. I thought it's the opposite. So well, let's jump to Emily. What did you expect before starting? Um, I think I also didn't have very specific expectations. Um, I just remember like reading the the email where you were pitching it and thinking like this sounds um, like a good opportunity, um, something that would be really interesting and I would grow a lot from. Um, and I was kind of like familiar with like the, the foundational ideas and like um, kind of vibed with it already. So I figured like this will probably be good. Um, but beyond that, I didn't have super specific expectations which is just how I am about most things. Um, and I was really happy with the result. Um, yeah, it, it was, as I expected, a really good like learning experience. I feel like I grew um, and I really appreciated like um, what comes of having a bunch of different people in like a room virtually with like different ideas and perspectives. Um, and yeah, I, I didn't have like a lot of expectation, expectations, particularly about like the, the second part of the mastermind, which was like, we'll come up with something um, as a group to do together. And I remember thinking at the beginning, like, I have no clue what that would be. Like, I, I don't really have any ideas, um, but we ended up coming up with so many ideas um that were all like that well many of which were like very exciting and I was like oh this is so cool I like I would not have like come up with these um by myself or like yeah had those ideas um yeah is everyone else thinking what I'm thinking when she says that of like she hit the ball out of the park with the ideas the the one we went with so we'll have to get back to that i want to ask next about what the group experience was but uh was like the team experience uh but evelyn um what did you expect before starting you kind of talked about it before but maybe you can share more yeah i did i expected to be an outsider among like heavy hitters i thought that i was you know just not gonna be one of the gang because who am i like i don't i don't know how to buy bulk yet or didn't then <laughs> like i didn't you know i was just i but josh um you kept um, c confirming, I don't know if that's the right word, but you kept assuring, assuring, reassuring me that, um, I was welcome and that there was no sort of wrong place to start. And I'm so grateful that that, um, was true because I think that my idea of what I, I think, well, one, I think it was important that we did all come from a variety of backgrounds and experiences. Like it might not have been as awesome if everybody was as um, newbie, as such a newbie as I um, was and still am. But I'm glad that my ideas of like where I was in my own trajectory didn't limit my um, ability to participate. Um, so I think that yeah, this idea that like, if I'm not already like Josh, then I'm not, you know, then like, wh then what's the, then I'm not, you know, wh what, what can I get out of this mastermind? But really like, that's, it's exactly what it's for is like for people who want to be together and learn from each other and get better, continue there. Why, or um, what do you call it? The Y oh, the, axis? The Y intercept versus the, y the slope. Yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. Yes. To um, change the slope as opposed to just do the Y intercept. <laughs> right, exactly. So she's referring to a conversation we had. And uh, how many people here, when they heard Evelyn concerned about her level of participation, felt that she really didn't participate much? <laughs> Did she participate? Of course. Yeah, uh, like a lot. Uh, Conrad, how about you? What were your expectations? So, Josh, we definitely talked a lot about, you know, what were our initial approaches around the first and second half of the, of just the workshop as a whole. And I distinctly remember not having a clear sense of 
you know, what would happen, especially during the uh, first half of the section where, you know, part of our concerns, or at least part of my concerns was around, you know, how much we would go into this method and design of, of communication and leadership and, and self-initiation initiation and initiation through others, of course, um, as a group, the Spodic method. I wasn't quite clear how much that would impact what we would be doing moving forward and also just how in, how much it would take on such definitive role across the first half of the session itself. Like you would imagine when you participate in a workshop like this, your initial expectation would be, all right, we're gonna get a lot of stuff done. Um, but I think the funny thing was the the work that actually got done, you know, when we looked at it at the end was, was very internal work. Um, and I think a lot of people don't, like I didn't, I certainly didn't connect with that expectation first and foremost. Like I was really envisioning like, all right, we'll go through the sweater method and then we'll get a lot of stuff done in the second half. We'll get really tactical about a lot of things. And it's like, yes, that did happen, especially towards the end, but there was so much drive and learning and lesson and so much momentum built. And I think what, what's going to carry us forward as a group now but I, that I'm really grateful for this sort of the least expected element was just how much the workshop would be a catalyst for us to continue to have conversations down the line. I wasn't looking at that in week one, right? So it sounds like everybody had like a, a vague idea. It could be useful and it was much more concrete and much more specific and enabling you to do things than you knew ahead of time. Do I read that right? Like you don't really have to know much before you get in. It'll, it'll walk you through and things will work out. Um, so now I want to ask about the group experience and, and did a team form, How, you guys didn't know each other beforehand. Do you feel like you connected? Uh, do you feel like, what was the experience like as a group and feel free, let's go, um, Conrad, Emily, Evelyn, Eugene, but since we're talking about team stuff, feel free, if you guys don't mind to interrupt each other or augment things, if, if someone brings up something and, and it was relevant to your experience. And I should also mention, we, I, I didn't mention Nikisha Glover who couldn't make it this time, but she's another person. There was one other person who was in it and she was part of the team too. But uh, Conrad, do you want to start with the team experience? Uh, yeah, as a TA, I would say, um, Josh, you and I hung out a lot, obviously. Um, at the same time, uh, Evelyn, Emily, Eugene, it was great interacting with you guys as a group, um, both through the office hours, both through the post main session conversations, and obviously in, in the middle of the group discussions as well. And I mean, it's fantastic riffing off with you guys. Like y'all are really smart and y'all have, you know, you share your feelings and your emotions and, and expects like with respect to both the joys and the sorrows, which I think is awesome. Um, I don't think everyone gets that type of general workshop experience of connecting with others online altogether, right? Um, I live in a very uh, commercial space, if you would, online. And so y'all have made a very particular impact on me as just a human being, let alone someone who minds sustainability and wants to pursue that effort further. So thank you. I forget what order I said next. Same. <laughs> Let's go Evelyn <laughs> next. Evelyn, do you want to share about the team experience? Sure, sure. I will. I just didn't hear you. Evelyn and Emily have the same number of syllables and tend to sound alike. And we have the same initials. Um, yeah, I I guess I second Conrad's motion of like this real, I felt like I really built a community and I've lived in somewhat of an isolated, like um, not just like geographic location, but also just lifestyle, not really on purpose. COVID like made it worse. Um, so I've been really conscientious. Like part of my grad school experience was realizing like I need to be in rooms with people. <laughs> I can't just, I've like reached the end of the line of what I can do and what I know on my own. Um, and so coming like with this determination, like against my own sort of self-defeating biases <laughs> of like, oh, you're not good enough to be part of this team. Like once that was sort of clear that it wasn't true or that it's important to um that, that this doesn't this like approach like sustainability do, there's no like floor of there's no like um yeah the bar of like where you get to start is just wherever you are so i like that um i liked building sort of relationships with people who were at different 
on different journeys, on different parts of their journey, but but that we could still collaborate and share and learn from each other. And um, it wasn't like it, it wasn't like we were, I don't know, it was like same but different. <laughs> Um, and I, I really appreciate like even so there were office hours once where I showed up late and Emily also apparently showed up late and the people you guys, you know, the people who hosted were like, oh, well, it's been half an hour. No one's coming. So it just ended up being Emily and I and having that time to like get to know each other, like Emily was saying, um, while we, you know, just chatted, um, was really, it, it's like, it's that kind of, um, it's that kind of connection that you just can't force you know, that like, okay, we already know we have something in common um, based on our, you know, focus on sustainability. But as people, we're also all really interesting, <laughs> fabulous people. And I'm grateful now. Like if I, you know, it, it's cool to see how geographically um, distant we are, but that together we've made this little club that it's not like an exclusive club, like anyone's welcome to join the movement um, but the being like in this particular virtual room with these particular people was a real privilege, like from Hawaii to Boston to um, New York to Florida to Oregon. And I think Nikisha's in North Carolina, South Carolina, North Carolina, I think. OK. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, a real wide variety of um, people, places, you know, um, starting points, journeys. It was I, I feel like I'm part of a team. Um, and that's been really fun and like on a human level, really important. Emily, how about you? Yeah, um, I really appreciated um, like the group experience. And I think the thing that I'll highlight is that um, it was really apparent to me how much a group is like more than the sum of its parts when it comes to like solving problems and like increasing understanding of things um so when we were like practicing the spodok method and like going through examples um and like talking about uh like challenges or just like experiences in general that we had practicing on our own as well um I found it super helpful to be able to hear like what other people's questions and challenges were and like everyone else's suggestions on like how to think about those and how to approach them. Um, and I think it like, it definitely adds up to a lot more than like what any one person's questions um, or like just one-on-one -on -one discussions could get to um because like yeah other people would like bring up questions that like once they said it I was like oh yeah that like that really puts into words like a similar question that I had but I hadn't like intended on asking or hadn't really like fully put together yet in my head um and like I think I can be like on the reserved side of like sometimes I don't want to like ask a question or like say something if I feel like I haven't really worked it out clearly in my head first. Um, so being able to like lean on other people um, and like riff off of other people's thoughts uh, was like very uh, enabling for my learning. Um, yeah, and I think also just everyone's attitude of like, being very open to suggestions and like wanting to learn and grow was really nice um, and just like made for an atmosphere where it very much felt like we we're all like, you know, on, on the same team and like more or less trying to do the same thing and all like here to help each other. Um, and I think it's always like a, a real treat to be in a group where you feel like you have that connection with everyone else. And Eugene? Um, sorry, I, you might be getting some wind now. As you can see, I'm now outside. Uh, where I was, the connection was not good. And, and who knew that your connection to the sustainability group gets clearer when you get out into nature? Um, 
uh, it's hard to think of anything that hasn't already been said for me too it was it was a really really fun experience like I, I can't emphasize that part enough it was it was just fun being able to talk to other people regularly and one of the other big I guess takeaways that I got from this group was that I just want to talk with more people more often about this kind of stuff you know just just whoever whoever before I, I it, it felt like I had to find oh oh wait this guy I think he might be interested in sustainability I could I could probably talk with him or like you know oh this person oh I think this person likes like renewable energy stuff I could probably talk with them about renewable energy stuff but after this it's like I'm kind of just excited to just talk to anybody about sustainability stuff now just it's just been fun making connections with people and I, I know that not everybody is going to be as accepting and welcoming of, of the sustainability stuff as this, uh, this group is but um, still like that's that's been one of my biggest things is like even if this mastermind ends it's like I'm going to find more ways to talk to more people now from now on. Since you mentioned talking about it the Spodic method isn't just talking it's also leading people to act so are, when you say talk to people, is it also, is it just talking to people or is it also leading them? To me, the, the, the talking part is always kind of the, the starting point, I think, for the leading part. Um, I definitely would feel more comfortable now bringing it up and bring up the, the Spodek method that is like after engaging people in conversation and developing a connection with people, I think that I would now feel a lot more comfortable than I would have before to start bringing it up. Like, like for example, I had never done the Spodek method with my parents before. And it's like, I, I've been doing it for like two years with other people, but I haven't, I've never done it with my parents. I still haven't done it with like my best friend, for example. And it's just like, now, now it seems ridiculous that I haven't. <laughs> Now I have to ask you guys that uh, we, so we met for two hours a week on a weekend. How did you feel when it was coming out? Did, did you feel like that was a big commitment beforehand? And when you did it, were you looking forward? Were you dreading? What did you feel about the, the conversations, you know, in the hours just before or in the week coming up to it? Uh, how did you feel about two hours a week? How did you feel about meeting online like this? Should I do names or does anyone want to pop in first? I like the naming process. I think it's it helps move things around. All right, so we'll keep going random. Uh, has Emily gone first yet? Emily, I forget. Um, I, I can go first. Okay. So we'll do Emily, Eugene, Evelyn, Conrad. Okay. Um, so for the time commitment, I thought it was it was pretty reasonable and it made sense um to do like two hours a week um on on the weekend and um I think like making a commitment is never like oh great I'm so glad I won't be doing other things at this time um but I thought it would be worthwhile and it like definitely was um it felt like a, a good use of time um, and also like a, a good length to be able to get in depth about stuff, but not get like completely exhausted and like tired out by the end. Um, and I also appreciated having the uh, like optional office hours session in the middle of the week. Um, I think I had a lot of productive discussions in those. Okay, how about you, Eugene? the time how was that for you what did you expect at the beginning how, how was it yeah so at the beginning it, it did feel a little bit like oh god this is, this is going to be a lot of time in my week and being the the local hawaii resident that i am i also had to get up the earliest so i had to get up at 5 50 in the morning on my sundays so that i could make it by 6 a.m on sunday morning um which i wasn't excited for um but after, after one or two meetings, it felt way more than worth it. <laughs> it. Getting up and then not just being able to come in and just like talk with you guys and, and have just this, these awesome conversations every Sunday morning. Um, 
don't know. It, it was it was kind of like a nice start to the week too. I, I kind of liked having this conversation right there at the start of the week. So so at the beginning, it did before we started. It felt a little bit like oh, this is going to take a lot of time. It's it's going to be kind of uh, might be a little bit of a pain in the butt to keep up with. But once we got started, it didn't feel that way at all. The only thing is that I I did wish that I could have made more of the office hours. The office hours always happened during my work hours since I'm in Hawaii and six hours behind everyone else. Um, So I do wish that I could have made more office hours um, because I think having more of those unstructured conversations that you guys had a lot of in the office hours would have been really fun to join in on. I think you, there were a, f- a couple ones where we went past the two hours and you stayed for maybe another hour, at least 45 minutes a couple times. Yeah, at least once or twice. Yeah, so even though, it was two, even though two hours felt like a lot before, then you stayed on extra several times. And Evelyn, so let's go to Evelyn, because I, I know she stayed extra times too. Uh, yeah, but what was I the time it. for you before it started? What did you, you know, did you think it was a lot too much to try? And how was it when you got into it? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I mean, I think that um you know all of there was there was some level of like paid participation so like all right well might as well get the most for what you know what we're like (laughs) like the service you know felt like um like an opportunity I don't know I felt I felt like lucky to get you for two hours a week right that we could just ask you like anything we wanted sort of um and Maybe there was part of me that was hesitant about the time commitment. I I find it like a relief to ha- to like tell other people like, oh, you got to watch the kids because <laughs> I have something else to do. <laughs> um, and there was something like the Sunday morning thing felt very spiritual to me. Like I'm not a church going type, um, but I really liked the time set aside to be like in fellowship to be together with like-minded people and talk about big important ideas that mattered to us and that like connected us as humans so i think that um and did we talk about it here in this group that like the the perfect meeting is or the right you know time of meeting is like between 90 minutes and two hours do we talk about that here i don't think so i can't remember okay that must have been a different group but really like research shows and I should find the study. Um, But basically like 60 minutes is just not long enough to, for people to gather and warm up, you know, and get ideas flowing. And then also like close. It's like having a, you know, five day vacation. (laughs) Like, well, that was fun, I guess. Um, But I, I think the two hours ended up flying by and with, so with the group size was just right. I mean, I'm sure a few, if a few more people had signed up, that would have been great too. Um, But having such an intimate group where we all really had a chance to share and um, we could we could sort of we could spend more time on something if we wanted to or less time um, or just really, yeah, like follow up with one person's experience, like when Emily threw her (laughs) dynamite dinner party. (laughs) Um, So I I was into it. And yeah, the the idea of two hours, I think it's all, I mean, how's this for like sustainability? It's like when people say they don't have time for sustainability, like, well, what else are you doing? Right. So I think that th- whatever I was giving up was probably just like putzing around on my phone <laughs> or, you know, I mean, maybe doing house chores, but they all get done anyway. So it was, I, I look, I looked forward to it um, Sunday morning and I, I'll, I think I'm going to miss it when <laughs> we, when we aren't meeting. So I guess we'll have to, do our do our own you know clubs or whatever keep keep the ball rolling and we are working on that uh i'm gonna go back to the part of your question where you sort of talked about like what were the feelings about you know the upcoming meeting itself and i can distinctly remember i think as almost in the way that eugene described it but perhaps in a different light with respect to his particular situation but you know as we all know from each of the meetings we took home some homework. I mean, some of it was mainly just talking to other people and practicing uh, the method. And obviously with that came more homework, you know, more activities, like actual initiatives within the space of uh, environmental sustainability. And I can distinctly recall, you know, there being both in the room and as well as prior, you know, a little bit of anxiety around, you know, what we had to show up for, basically, you know, that accountability side. But then at the same time, as the weeks drew on, that became less and less of a factor. There were some, you know, things that we all got over in terms of just like our sense of like, you know, Evelyn, as you put it before, like, 
what 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 standard do we have to be on right now like should we be farther along in our journey and it's like no you're at where you're at like that's cool and so that kind of release um from you know oversetting on expectation and then from an actual standpoint of like time investment it was like oh my god this isn't like i don't feel like i'm managing myself to be here I, I don't feel like this is time that I'm constraining myself against some other things that there's a conflict of interest there. There's actually, this is, this is something I'm looking forward to and wanting to be a part of with respect to my time. And I find that to be a very, very powerful feeling. I feel so honored just listening to this stuff. The, the, uh, I think there's a time for one, maybe one more question. Uh, would you recommend this to others? Is there anyone who shouldn't do it? Or is there anyone who particularly should do it? Uh, let's go Conrad, Emily, Eugene, Evelyn. Conrad. Remind me the first half of the question. There were two questions. Would you recommend this to others? Are there pe people who particularly should or shouldn't do it? I, I, I definitely would recommend this to as many people as I possibly could. Um, I, I hope to say that with as little bias as I possibly can. Um, I don't know if there's anyone who I wouldn't recommend participating. Uh, I think it's it's totally possible for someone to come in with a very critical mind, and you know, as they're going through this experience of of leadership and and this Bodic method and and you know, trying to operate sustainably, I'm sure things could go wrong if your you know your sense of attitude is amongst you know what one of the things that we talked about in the earlier on in the in the workshop, you know, the the five C's. Um, and so if your attempt to participate in this program is becomes or or or, or it starts off with this intention of like, I'm going to manage myself into oblivion with this thing, then hopefully I would take a step back and try to, you know, try to um, backtrack from that particular line of thinking and just come at it with a different perspective. Um, but otherwise, you know, everybody should be a participant in this particular type of program. I think this is a great, I think this is, I think this could be probably some of the most important style of community that we need to have right now in our day and age. Given the, the environmental situation humanity's in, is it, do I read that right? I, I would argue with respect to the environmental situation, our cultural values more than anything else need this. Like I, I, yeah, I think the environment and the way that is being displayed in, in many respects is a, is a side effect of who we've become as a culture. And I think what this does is this solves the cultural problem. Everything in me wants to ask more questions about that, but we're gonna have to leave that as a cliffhanger for other participants to experience it themselves. Emily, how about you? Yeah, I would in general recommend this um, for all the same reasons that Conrad just mentioned. Um, as for who I wouldn't recommend it to, um, I would just say like, if someone is like completely like diametrically opposed to like the idea of like, um, trying out like this particular type of like connection and motivation that the Spodic method, um, is. I would say like that would not be perhaps the best idea. I don't think that's very likely that someone would just like stumble into like signing up for an eight week like course on something they completely disagree with. So, um, but that's, that's, I guess the only example of someone I wouldn't recommend it to. And you, anyone you would you recommend to anyone in particular? Yeah, um, I think people who uh, want to do more about sustainability feel less like um, negatively like about the entire topic all the time. Like people who suffer from like cl climate anxiety, perhaps um people who want to like connect more in like a genuine way um and like a growth mindset way about it with other people but like don't really um feel like able to do that so people with climate anxiety and 
I want to go back to what you said about the, the people you would, whom, who you said the people who don't like this sort of thing, is that people who don't like sustainability, people who don't like leading others, people who don't like working in a group? What was the, could you clarify that? Yeah. So I think like people who um, like don't value sustainability um, on like, a deep level, not just like on the superficial, like it would be nice, but I don't really see a way to make an impact. But like people who genuinely like do not care, which like I don't think there's that many of them, but like they exist. Um, okay. So people who really just like, I don't care. I got mine, you get yours. I'm going to go roll coal in my vehicle and stuff like that. Yeah. Does everyone roll coal on it? when people have their cars uh, adjusted so they can spew out a big cloud of exhaust behind them. Uh, so people who know that people like that, maybe this wouldn't be right for. Yeah. Okay, Eugene, how about you? Would you recommend it to others? Anyone you'd recommend it to special or anti-recommend it? Yeah. Um, no, I like, I like Emily's answer. Just anybody who wants to watch the world burn. They, they probably wouldn't be quite right for this course. Um, but yeah, absolutely. I would absolutely recommend to everybody. But I guess if I had to pick a group in particular, I spend a lot of time. I wouldn't say a lot of time. I spend some time in the social media environment, environmental sustainability, social media circles. And there are so many people there that want the world to change and probably do very, very little in their own lives to actually make the change. I think, I think Josh, um, you said it best at some point. I mean, the, the answer to living sustainability sustainably is, is to try just living sustainably. We could just try to do that. And I think a lot of people don't see that or, or think that somehow if I focus my energies on me living sustainably, then I won't have the energy to, to push the government and the industries to change when it's like, it's kind of the other way around. And, and you can't push the governments and the industries to change unless you're already showing others how to live sustainably, right? They're, they're, they're all just out there to make money. We kind of have to change the, the culture and the ideas behind the way we just live our everyday lives before we're going to be able to cause any kinds of shifts on the government industry side. So I would, yeah, absolutely. Just recommend it for anybody who is interested in sustainability, but does very little in their own life to actually change. What if they do some, but if it's more than a little? Absolutely. Oh, them even more, even, even like it's, it's, it's just going to be, even easier for them. But I, I feel like I hit these people a lot on social media, in Twitter, Instagram. You find all of these people who, who are pushing for change. It's like, well, what have you done? What have you done to change the way you live? And a lot of them, I think, have done very little. And I want to, I don't want to lead the witness too much here, but we've been talking about this experience being fun. I, is it the case that a lot of them think of it as like a chore or burden if they knew that it was fun? I mean, who, who's like, I don't want to do that. That sounds fun. So I suspect that they don't anticipate that it could be fun, that it could be this group experience. Yeah. I mean, the sense that I get when I'm in those circles is like, it's not our responsibility. The sense that I get is like, it's not really worth my time, my, my own impact on the earth is so small that it is a waste of time for me to try to change my life. But somehow if I could change that industry and that government over there and that company to change, if I can get them to change their ways, that would be a big impact. They're the ones that should change. So it feels partially like a, I guess mostly like a responsibility thing to me. Do you feel more able, less able uh, for, are, are you, some, someone might listen to what you just said and think, well, you're just changing what you, and now you're letting go of the corporations. Are you affecting the corporations and government more, less, or neutral as a result of this workshop? Um, more. I mean, to, to me, the more you change your own life, the more 
you will change an equivalent amount of of industry or um, government. Like, for example, if one of one of the switches that I made that I just happened to make, not necessarily because of this directly, but one of the changes that I made while we were going is that I stopped buying toothpaste in plastic tubes. Like, it was just one of my things. That I was just like, you know what? I've always used plastic in plastic or uh, plastic tube toothpaste and I was like there's so many recipes out there for making it yourself at home and so I started making my own at home and I haven't gone back to plastic ever since and that means that I also don't have to buy any more plastic it's like it's something that is yeah it's probably small like I'm not going to shut down the entire toothpaste industry or get the entire toothpaste industry to change but I have done my part from eliminating that much plastic that's going into the environment and supporting those industries in those ways. So it's it's small, but I don't know. To me, it feels better, feels healthier. It definitely feels more guilt-free. I don't have to feel bad about throwing away a toothpaste tube every month or so. And does it lead you? I want to know if 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 do you stop there? Okay, now you're done. Because to me, the more that I do, the more I want to do more, and the more I am capable to do more. No, definitely not. I mean, for me, the toothpaste thing is, is one of many things. Like I've, I've, I already did it for like soap and shampoo, and I've done it for other things, and I didn't get there and just stop and be like, I'm done. Now, it, if anything, it kind of pushes me more. It's like, oh wait, hey, I figured out it's not that hard to not have any plastic waste with my soap. Well, maybe I can do it with this too, or maybe with that too. Maybe I can do it in the kitchen too. Okay, cool. Let's get to Evelyn. And by the way, I, I don't. I think people are only going to get the audio or video. They're not going to see the chat. Now the chat is starting going like we're, like in our typical things. Like there's there's multiple levels of conversation. Usually, this is un. Am I right that this is unusual? That it's just like one and the next and the next. It's usually like um, an ebullient, um, effervescent conversation. Sure. So, Evelyn, uh, would you recommend this to others? Is there anyone you would count not recommend it to or recommend it to extra? Yeah, it's so funny. So um, there in social work, we like learned from one of our sort of heroes that like, um, you know, the, like the, the saying goes, you really only need social. The only place you need social workers is anywhere there is people. <laughs> and I kind of feel that way about sustainability, right? Like, oh, well, the only place you need sustainability workshops is anywhere there's people living on earth. So I don't know, you know, it's like who who wouldn't benefit from this? I don't know. I can't think maybe like young, young children, like maybe the formats. Too, I don't know. I, I, I can't I can see a lot of my the people in my world maybe resisting um participating in something like this but i can also see that if they were open to it that their lives would change too um and yeah i let's see i guess like our chat got so far down that now i'm looking at what the the question the, should everyone do it is there anyone who shouldn't or should do it extra <laughs> um i really I find it inspiring, especially like when people who either think they're already doing everything are then moved to re-examine their own lives or like stories you've shared, Josh, about talking with people who maybe on the political spectrum you would expect, you would have like <laughs> unconscious biases or maybe conscious biases about what you think their relationship with the environment is. Um, but that ultimately like we're all sharing this one spaceship, you know, this like planet <laughs> is our own shared spaceship so we all have we're all stakeholders in um keeping up the maintenance of that spaceship and making sure it does not break <laughs> um for our own sake obviously the earth will be fine even if we go extinct um but yeah i think like in addition to the human connection side like the <laughs> this is the, the all that the, all that we learned about what we can do and that personal impact and that um and that like, instead of passing that buck, because I used to be one of those people, oh, that's what I wanted to say is that this felt to me like the antidote to doom scrolling, right? Like that, that there was that instead of thinking that it's just someone else's job, that this was a mechanism by which 
you know, it, it wasn't just reading an article. It was talking to other human beings, you know, quote unquote, face to face. Right. Because we are. This is like synchronous conversation um, about, you know, what 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 changes can I make? And even like I feel like it matters less that like that little tub of toothpaste that you're not using, Eugene, is not going to rot in the ocean for 10,000 years. That's like not even that's not even the whole story. The story is that you are examining like your own behaviors. We, we t all together are examining our own behaviors. We're deciding like, okay, what's, what's next. And then we are inspiring others to do that too, both through the, through conversations, through like Spodic method conversations, and also just through role modeling. So that feels like it's like setting this tone, this resonance of, um, of who, you know, who we can be and that it doesn't, we don't have to just wait. We don't just have to keep waiting for like some big policy to change. Oh, something we had talked about during the group was like biking versus um, driving. And I think it was Conrad who said, well, that like that, that part of the world is just not very bike friendly. And Josh, you shared that neither was New York in the eighties. Right. And that it took a bunch of people riding their bikes through the non-bike friendly, um, world that had been, you know, built for car usage in order to change or at least begin to change what those, what those, um, you know, managerial and like policy patterns were as far as bike, bike and road. So I love that. I, I feel like this has helped me see, and I think that everyone who took this course would end up seeing that it's sort of a cop out to say, oh, what I, what I do doesn't matter. Or like, I, you know, like, oh, well, if the government's corporations aren't changing, then like what, you know, then I can throw all the toothpaste away that I want. Um, I think that's probably just, uh, it's just like magical thinking to let ourselves off the hook, but somewhere deep down, we know, we feel it, that, that guilt, like, you know, Eugene was saying like, well, I don't have to feel guilty about that anymore. Like, right, exactly. Like, look at us set ourselves free. So only, only people who want to be set free and feel good and build human connection and have fun and, you know, b like continue to build a world that their children can live in. Only those people should <laughs> be interested in this kind of thing. Now, because of the time, I really should just say any last words, but I can't help. I, I, I want to ask and stop me if I should if I shouldn't ask it. Evelyn, you there's an organization that you volunteer with and they named you, I think, the the sustainability department head or something like that. Or they do. do I hope people don't mind if I ask her to give a bit, a bit, a bit, of, yeah, a bit of background about that. Yeah, sure. I'm down um, if. Yeah. I, so I have. Um, yeah, joined the Temple of Hip Hop and I'm participating in um, some like hip hop event, like official hip hop events, um, including the 50th anniversary party um, in the Bronx um, this coming August, August 11th. Mark your calendars. Come on down for some music and fun and community. Um, and like a big part of hip hop is this um well, the the sort of the commu the um the cultural element of hip hop, not just like the musical, you know, lowercase hip hop, like the uppercase hip hop cultural elements, um, is is this like shared consciousness, <laughs> and this um, like fluidity of um. I don't know how to say it. I'm probably like I'm probably gonna bot I'm gonna botch it, but but basically like, treading lightly on the earth is in keeping with um, hip hop's cultural principles and values. And I think that that, um, it hasn't always been an explicit, um, an explicitly stated value. Um, and I'm new in the community, you know what I mean? Like I'm new in the, in the hip hop culture. Um, I'm like newly confident about saying I am hip hop. Um, so, you know, and there's a lot of pushback on that and I'm happy to have those conversations with anybody who wants to push back, but, um, suffice it to say that I've been invited by the hip hop community to participate in the ways that, you know, my heart calls me. And, um, and there's been a lot of enthusiasm and like recognition of like, oh yeah, this is like a missing component of what, of, of our efforts. Um, so I am not sure I'm, we're, it's still like very much in the, um, organizational phases and like my role in how to make this particular event, um, sustainable, um, is still, you know, taking shape. I know Josh, you had said like, well, don't just like, I, I have all these ideas, right? Like, oh, we just get, let's go buy a bunch of water bottles from thrift stores and like have it be a no plastic water bottle or no like single use plastic, um, events. Like we can, we can sanitize them and, you know, put our logo on it and then, you know, sell them and have like water jugs that people fill up. And Josh, I'm really grateful and I'm excited to talk more about 
um, sort of your input, which is like, don't just mandate, <laughs> don't just like tell, you know, it can't just be top down, um, that, that the whole point is that, um, a, like a sustainable mindset and a cultural shift means that people have to look inward, right? It's not just being told what to do. Um, so I'm, I'm interested to find like where, like sort of the, the overlapping point between leading the way and like role modeling what to do, like, or making it, you know, basically making barriers for polluting, like, okay, well, we're not going to sell plastic water bottles or like single use plastic water bottles. We'll sell like these other water bottles or you can bring your own and get free water. Um, because I think those kinds of systemic things are important. Like I'm not going to not do those, but I'm interested to see where else um, we can build like with that, with a, the, with a huge crowd, you know, and having like big influential people on stage um, with the microphone, like finding ways to incorporate those messages. So it's not just like some unknown, you know, white lady, like getting up in front of like 15, 20 Sedgwick. Hey guys, I'm here to talk to you about a thing that's important to me. Like, well, it's not, that's, you know what I mean? It's not, that's not the point. It's not about me. Um, it's about all of us. So yeah, that it's, always growing, always building. And like, what an honor, like what an opportunity. Talk about, you know, community building, like never, if you would ask me last year what I was going to be doing in August, like I would have never said, oh, I'm going to have like completed this, you know, workshop mastermind sustainability. And I'm going to be part of the Temple of Hip Hop or organizing the sustainability branch of 50th anniversary party. Never. But yeah, the, it's, it's like, this just opens doors. So it sounds like there was a community that valued treading lightly, but didn't actually do anything about it. And then you brought from this to there and then suddenly, boom, you're a, an organizer uh, bring something in that they'll value, but didn't know to, to, that they would have just done the event without thinking about it, without doing anything on these things. And now suddenly you're in charge and come August, you may be, it, it sounds like that's going to keep growing. Yeah, let's hope so. I, I, um, I flew out to New York to do this um, cultural specialist training. Um, I, in my mind, like I was really conflicted because now that the scales have fallen out of my eyes about flying, um, it, it was hard. I, I really had to decide like, is this, you know, is this the right thing to do? And I thought, well, we got to have our last flight sometime. Right. And if, and like, this is a community, the hip hop community is one that I'm new within. And I felt like I needed to meet face to face with my teacher um, in order to really confirm like what felt right in my heart based on all my readings and online access to that community. So um, in my mind, I thought, well, what, what better way to say goodbye to flying than like come out. And I actually met both of my, you know, my like sustainability <laughs> guru, as I call you to other people and um, KRS one my, you know, teacher, teacher. So um, I feel like now that I, now that I can at least try to close the door and, you know, there is no try, right? Like do it or don't. Um, but I feel committed to not flying. Um, and so I don't envision myself being out in New York for the, um, for the event in August. So it's an issue of like, well, how do I, you know, how do, how do you, organize and how do you lead um from afar so those are but those are hurdles i'm willing to jump glad to hear and let's do any last words in 30 seconds or less uh eugene emily evelyn conrad oh uh, you're gonna put me on the spot first <laughs> or, or does anyone uh, want to can anyone go before eugene nope eugene you're you're on <laughs> all right no i nothing in in particular um just that if this is something that you're interested in, if sustainability is something that you're interested in at, in at all, or even if you're not interested, just just give this a shot. Like the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to live a life that's healthier and happier and have more community. So give it a shot. All right. Thank you, Eugene. Emily? Um, I think... The thing I want to add is um, with a lot of things, I think it's important to like not let perfect be the enemy of good. And um, I think that happens in sustainability a lot where it's like, oh, if I don't find like the one solution, it's not worth working on or it's not worth doing. Um, and I would like recommend against that mindset for trying this because I don't think you need to be like oh this is like the thing that's going to like 
turn me into like the greatest sustainability person ever what's gonna like solve every question and problem I have about sustainability um I don't think that's like the answer to those does not need to be yes to um like have this experience and have it be very very much uh worthwhile um so yeah if that is like a concern for anyone I would just be like it's okay <laughs> right, thank you Emily Evelyn thanks yeah I I think I would say after talking to people just on a small spectrum of the of the folks I've heard you know as guests on your podcast, Josh, the spectrum of like, oh, I can't do sustainability because I am poor and I live in the Bronx to, oh, I can't do sustainability. Um, technology will save us and I can't give up flying. I would say I would encourage everyone to just ask their own, <laughs> yourself, whoever's listening, what is one little, what is one little thing I can do? Again, like the, I mean, the whole Spodic Method conversation is better, but if you're like anyone grappling with feeling really hopeless or powerless or like the earth is on fire and there's nothing we can do, well, there is something we can do. And that like breathes fresh life into um, motivation and hope. Um, and I just I just can't recommend it enough. It's a real it's therapeutic. It's, it's therapeutic. It's healthy. It's like a win-win. All it takes is that little jump of discomfort of changing what you're already doing. It takes like a little discomfort to look at yourself and be like, I don't, I don't like that. I don't like what I see. Um, but if you can get over that hump, then like, I promise you it's better on the other side. And I still have so far to go. Like I'm, you know, I'm, I'm saying it's on the other side as if I'm there, but there is no there, right? It's just a direction. It's the North star. So thanks for opening the door, Josh. And and team. Thank you, Evelyn. Conrad, last words. Uh, I guess the the only concern that I imagine people might have, um, as with anything else, right in their life, is um, you know if the time and the conflicts are not going to let them do this. Um, I would say the goal here, as it as it has been from the beginning, is um, this is not to say you must do this, um, but because you'll be doing it, um, you'll find yourself in a totally different perspective with yourself around time and your appreciation of it. I mean, really at the end of the day, like what else are we trying to do if not uh, have community, live healthily uh, and enjoy the time we have here on earth. So um, I I just find that, you know, for anyone else, for in the same respect of anyone, if anyone's interest, um, if for whatever reason you don't think you're going to have the time um, one, you will, two, we're happy to help you. Um, so please come on in. Thank you, Conrad. And now I'm going to be doing, we're going to wrap up and I'm going to do one-on-ones with everybody. So people who are watching or listening to this, uh, you get to get to hear longer conversations with me and each of these people separately, uh, coming up and yeah, everyone can do this. In fact, it may be that if you do the night, one of the upcoming workshops, one of these people may be the TA for the workshop that you do. Um, I think I have to end there, even though I know what's gonna happen is I'm gonna stop recording and then we're all gonna start talking at once and it's gonna be like the, the unrehearsed, friend, friendly. Um, anyway, thank you so all. I'll stop recording. Well, I have to because of everyone, because of, yeah. Uh, thank you all and talk to you again soon. <laughs>